Hello, welcome back to my channel. I think it is time for me to do another Bora City Magazine reactions. I have done a few of those and she has put out a number of videos lately and I feel that like I need to catch up. I did watch some off camera, so I did not record the ones that I watched off camera, the, hence the word. Hence the phrase off camera, right? But anyway, I plan to do some on camera, some off camera. So um, today I'm going to do, what's it called? That the trilogy of English songs, whatever the title is. I'm going to put the title somewhere here. But anyway, without further ado, let's go. Even though the members of BTS have released multiple songs that are completely in English, the famous trilogy of English songs is the one that made them go from a group known for their large fan base to the mainstream act that they are today. Sure, the fandom is still the most important. I think she said put on subtitles, so I'm going to do, even though I don't think we need it, but anyway, I'm gonna do it valuable part of BTS's success, but now we get to listen to their songs in commercials, award shows, the MTV Movie and TV Awards and the Unscripted Awards, festivals, radio, competition shows, Sport events, TV shows, to the tune of, of Dynamite, BTS. You of ready? Of course, Dynamite. There yes. we go. And videos by random famous people. Oh no, I'm like a Rolling Stone. Ice tea and a game of ping pong. Watch me bring the fire, set the night alight. Ladies and gentlemen, I got the medicine. So you should keep your eyes on the ball. So I'ma light it up like dynamite. They like the point, the BTS point, uh. These songs are the disco pop track Dynamite, the catchy summer song Butter, and the hopeful permission to dance. But what about their previous songs in English? These other songs are either intros, outros, singles where only one of them participate, singles where only a couple of them participate, or solo projects. So the reason why these are the big three is because these are the only songs that are promoted singles where the seven members participate. But why did they do it? Was it really necessary for them to release songs? in English? Is it fair to say that they are releasing these songs just for money and fame while no. ignoring their Korean roots? No. The easy answer for some people may be yes, but I think that is a baseless and unfair answer. But let's start from the beginning. If you follow BTS, you may know that they never had the intention to release a song in English. Will we produce the whole album in English? No. Yeah. That's a question? And at that moment, it made sense. They were just starting to find their way on the US music industry as a serious act, and not just as an unusual phenomenon. Of course, like any other artist, they wanted to become more popular, but their strategy to achieve this was through live performances, and they prioritized their involvement in the songwriting and producing process. They even prepared the massive project On, which was the main single of the long-awaited album Map of the Soul 7, which did not only include a music video, but also a Teenage Manifesto film and a special performance on the Grand Central Terminal in New York. And who knows what else they prepare for this song because the pandemic started cancelling every single show planned. The lockdown, of course, changed everything. Before, they were able to prioritize these other things and they were highly motivated to talk about the different topics that are usually present on BTS's songs. Youth, sadness, happiness, society, psychology. And meeting and interacting with fans while performing was their biggest motivation. But since they were not able to meet their fans anymore, that motivation was gone. Everything I just said is not new to fans. These are just the things they had said multiple times on interviews and keep on saying now. So why did they release this trilogy of songs in English that are not mainly written or produced by them and that don't carry any heavy, complex meaning like their previous songs? Their answer is pretty simple. They say it's because we are in a worldwide pandemic and we want happy and carefree songs to forget. And the easiest way to communicate this to everyone is with a song in English. This answer, even though reasonable and 
and logical, may still leave some skeptics thinking that they are just sellouts and that they took the easiest way to success in America. But then, why didn't they do this in 2017, when they were first invited to an American award show? Or in 2018, when they realized that Americans and radio and people just like to throw shades at things that they don't understand. So BTS have how many songs? Over 300? They have very few English songs. Why do they... Just because they have English songs doesn't mean that they're sellouts. So what they are promoting in the US? What's wrong with that? They promote it in Japan with Japanese songs. I think I think they tried Chinese. It just it didn't sound right. I don't know. Maybe I'm prejudiced. I'm biased. I'm Chinese myself, but Chinese rap they don't sound right. I don't know why. Anyway, continue. TV don't welcome songs that are not in English, or when they started collaborating with Western artists, or at the beginning of 2020, when they released their biggest project on, they are still singing in Korean. This is when you realize that what they're saying is true. They never took the easy way out. They prioritize their involvement in the creation of their music and performance, even if this means that their growth in popularity is going to be slower. And it was obvious the general public wanted carefree songs on these difficult times. Every popular song in 2020 was either carefree or meaningless. Well, I have to say most of the Western songs are meaningless in my opinion. <laughs> the world needed songs like this. Well, one thing about carefree song versus meaningless song, I think the world needs carefree songs during that time. We want happiness. We want song to bring some excitement, just some lightheartedness. For example, Dynamite. Yeah, let's light it up you know, with the disco theme. Then Butter, it's, you know, if the beat is good, boom, 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 right? And then Permission to Dance is just like, so they are not meaningless. They are carefree with very simple to understand meaning. Just have fun, enjoy your life, and move on. As versus the true meaningless songs that are in abundance across the radio stations. And for me, I have no problem with BTS in English. I still prefer their Korean songs or Japanese songs, but I'm okay with the few English songs for that special situation during pandemic that they are promoting happiness. They're promoting hope. So it's carefree with a very simple to understand meaning versus meaningless songs because BTS will never produce meaningless songs. And I don't like meaningless songs. Just me, I'm older, so yeah. I want to highlight that it's not like they suddenly decided to only release songs in English. After Dynamite is still in the middle of the pandemic, they released B, an album that focuses on the journey of their emotions during lockdown. For this album, we literally channeled our thoughts and emotions of the past few months into music. They also released a couple of Japanese songs, two of which were promoted singles in Japan, and various other unpromoted solo songs. Their most recent project was a collaboration with the British band Coldplay, and it's a meaningful song with Korean lyrics written by the members. But BTS haters just ignore these projects. They pretend like BTS decided to not be Korean anymore, just because of these three songs. But I want to go even further and talk about why some K-pop fans resent BTS's decision to start releasing songs in English. I just mentioned that also in in 2020, they released Japanese songs. This is not uncommon for Korean groups, and certainly not uncommon for BTS. It is logical that these groups release songs in Japanese, because Japan is the second biggest music yes. market in the world, and Korean groups have been doing this for years. For K-pop fans, this was never a problem, and they never accused these groups of losing their Korean roots for singing in Japanese, even if this is not their idol's native language. To them, these rules, of course, do not apply to BTS. A Korean group targeting not only the second biggest 
biggest music market, but also the biggest music market, America. And I know that that is another conversation, but I do believe that people that think like this are K-pop fans who want their groups to be in a bubble. They want to feel different for listening to something that is in a different language. Korean, Japanese, it doesn't matter to them, as long as they sound Asian enough and don't become mainstream in Western countries, they can feel special. Other K-pop groups have also released songs in English, but again, it was never a problem because none of these were actually successful. Only this trilogy of songs are a problem because the general public who are not into K-pop are not listening to BTS. The general public or non-BTS fans started listening to these songs on radio, commercials on TV, and YouTube. But of course, these days, TikTok influences what yes. the general public listens to. And at first, I didn't realize how much of an important role TikTok had on the success of these songs. And this is because TikTok ARMY and TikTok K-pop fans are not very welcoming of locals or non-fans using BTS songs, which is ridiculous but also another topic. But just so you can understand the difference, one artist that has multiple TikTok heads is Doja Cat, and this is because a lot of people People use her music not only on trends but also as background music for videos that have no specific topic and the comment on these videos are about the specific TikTok that you are watching and that can be a dance, a recipe, a funny video or a fan edit about another artist. This however does not happen a lot on TikTok that use BTS's music. Instead, we see a bunch of comments asking the creator of the video if they are ARMY, thanking them for using the song or demanding the creator of the video to not use a BTS sound or to not do a BTS dance if they are not a fan. And these are the kind of comments that can discourage a person who's not a fan to use a BTS sound on Really? They actually do that? Because I know sometimes I use BTS song for my other like Instagram or TikTok posting on my walks around the neighborhood. So, but then again, my channel is small, so not a lot of people watching, so I don't get those kind of questions. <laughs> While you're at it, subscribe to my channel. <laughs> TikTok. Therefore, it is very hard for BTS and also for K-pop singers in general to have a truly TikTok hit. Despite this, the general public kept using BTS songs on TikTok, and I in particular didn't realize this until a friend of mine who is not a fan and who is not on ARMY TikTok told me that she kept listening to these songs on her side of TikTok. So apparently BTS overcame this curse in some way, and this helped them to an extent on music charts, which are now a list of TikTok hits. But now we have the criticism on the simplicity of the lyrics and production. And to that I ask, why are BTS the only ones hold to such high standards? You accept carefree songs by other Western artists. And these are only three songs of BTS's entire discography, which includes more than 400 songs. Also, it's not like this trilogy of songs is completely meaningless and boring and bad. Dynamite is a disco pop song that talks about being happy and lighting up your life. It's about making regular days happier. I also find it interesting how it's full of American references that I had to look up their meanings because English is my second language. So it may look like basic lyrics for Americans, but for the rest of the world, it can be really cool to find about these references. Butter is the perfect summer song. I would say that the majority of popular songs now are about showing up, and Butter is kind of like that. They are basically saying that they are the coolest, hottest, and smoothest guys of the summer. And the fact that they released a remix yes. with the hot girl summer Megan Thee Stallion makes it even better. Finally, Permission to Dance is a hope song that talks about the pandemic. Many misunderstand PTD and say that it's about celebrating the end of the pandemic, but if you read the lyrics closely, you will notice that it's about being happy despite living in a pandemic. They are basically saying, yes, the night is still cold, but we can still dream about that moment. And even though there are restrictions for a lot of things, at least we don't need permission to dance. These are all fun songs that carry a message of hope and positivity. Yes. In the past few years, we learned that each and every moment is uh, precious. Everything I just said are basically the reasons so why cute. these three BTS songs are their biggest ones today and why they were right to release them now. It was a good decision, it was the right move. They were not only lucky that TikTok was around, but also they started releasing songs in English because they genuinely felt like it was the best time. They didn't do it with the whole purpose of becoming more popular in the Western music industry, or they would have done it years ago when they first had the opportunity. We cannot ignore the reason why these songs are so big in America, and it's because no matter how amazing BTS's lyrics are in Korean, the American general public is not going to pay attention. Life will and I hate to say this, but most. American general public, or I 
don't want to think about Americans. Most general public, they don't. They don't understand some of the deep meanings. I remember when I was growing up, I listened to some folk songs or some English song, which had meanings, good meanings. And as time goes by, people are over preoccupied with beats. With the beat of the sound and whatever they, the the lyrics become, it becomes a second thought of the song. So the most important thing is the beat. Then there is just something they put together. Some songs have absolutely no meaning whatsoever, other than just you know move your ass and you know backing it up and those kind of things. So. Blue Swan had a total of six spins on US radio. Black Swan had two. Basically, BTS can never win to them. They sing in Korean, they are rejected because of their language. They sing in English, they are accused of being sellouts. So instead of judging BTS for being unable to write and sing complicated English lyrics, appreciate the effort they put on their English releases. They practice. Naming a song that is currently on the radio station. That has complicated lyrics, complicated meaning, deep meaning. Just give me, give give me a name, okay? Because well, first of all, I do not listen to radio anymore because most of, every time I listen to radio, you know the songs I hear were just really meaningless. Not even simple meaning, other than just oh I love you, you love me. That's you know have fun together. Those kind of thing, or you know she looks hot backing it up. Those kind of thing. There's no, there's no song that has good meaning. So, if someone wants to criticize BTS for not writing complicated, intricate, complicated song with intricate lyrics, give me a song that is currently popular right now, that's playing on the radio and that has very deep, complex meaning. T- tell me one. I challenge you, but you, you, someone might be able to give me that because I don't listen to radio. <laughs> so, hold on. A lot to get the pronunciation right, and they prioritize happiness and positivity, which was always part of their message. Okay, I tend to forget that the uh, Bora City magazine tend to uh, start the mute, start the video very abruptly and ends it very abruptly too so that was the end anyway so i was just talking over her i apologize that um you know about the meaningful songs in english there's no such thing nowadays and i don't know whether it's the education here in the u.s or what that the youngsters these days do not want to use their brain power in songs, <laughs> I might get a lot of hate from that statement, but I'm just an Asian mom speaking my mind that I have different expectations when it comes to my son. And yeah, but I don't want to get myself in deeper trouble. <laughs> so I better stop right now. Anyway, that was today's reaction on the uh, the video essay regarding the three English songs made by BTS during the pandemic. If you ask me, of the songs that they released lately, like when I say lately, it's the past few years, started with Boy With Love, do I like them more than the Korean ones? Not really. Actually, I actually like Butter. And I do like Dynamite Butter and Prince Dance. I like them over more than Boy With Love, actually. I don't know why. I just like them better. But do I still prefer their Korean songs because as you know, as we all know, they can be more expressive in their own language. Their Korean songs are poetries and I'm not talking about the translation into English because once they translate into English, the loss they lost the the beauty of it. 
doing the translation. So a lot of time, what I do is I actually look at the translation in Chinese because the language are closer Korean to Chinese. So they kept the poetry, they kept the artistry in the translation. Mostly, I would not say all. Mostly, so when I read the Chinese translation versus English translation, English translation is kind of like, eh, you know, sometimes they don't make much sense, and sometimes the the meaning got lost in translation, you know, so to speak, translation. So I do look for Chinese translation instead, but you know, I I lost track of what I'm trying to say. So I'm gonna end the video right here. <laughs> Until next time. Have a wonderful day. Bye.